deserts to high mountains, rolling dirt trail to technical single tracks, lots of elevation and breathtaking landscapes, everything is covered in the 22 races on four continents. Welcome back on the 2017 Ultra Trail World Tour for a new set of discoveries and emotions. In this episode, we'll head to Spain in the Castellon region to follow the Panagolosia Trail, part of the Ultra Trail World Tour circuit for the first year. We will then venture to a new trail running Mecca, the Madeira Island. And we'll wrap up this episode in the southern hemisphere between bush and kangaroos with the Australia Ultra Trail. For the first time this year, the Peña Golosa Trail has joined the Ultra Trail World Tour circuit before hosting the trail running World Championships next year. A great way to promote this race that was founded in the 50s when a few hikers decided to link Castellón to the San Juan de Peña Golosa Sanctuary, located at 1800 meters of altitude. The race uses the original route and the official race course was made in 1998. The event now offers several options, including a 115K race. The participants will have up to 28 hours to finish the race that features no less than 5,400 meters climb. For the 2017 edition, 600 runners will participate in the Ultra. A midnight start will force them to gear up appropriately for a sleepless night. I think it's going to go quite fast in the beginning. Uh, normally, I start uh, the races a little bit slower than the other guys, but uh, I think the flat parts uh, is uh, probably some of my uh, best sides, so I think I will. Uh, stay in the uh, front group for the first part, uh, hoping to have some uh, energy, some speed uh, for the last more technical, uh, more difficult part. And then we'll just uh, see whoever has uh, the most uh, uh, to give at the end. Top runners came from all over the world, and amongst them, Timothy Olsen from America. The race starts on the track, pushing the runners to set a fast pace, but soon enough they're hitting undulating dirt trails that stretches the pack. Runners are now experiencing the endurance runner's solitude. año pasado a hacer la mil y me gustó bastante lo que pasa que bueno no la, no la conocía entonces claro eh, te pones a correr rápido 
para intentar bajar récord, pero luego al final casi que lo pagas un poco. Entonces, bueno, este año quiero eh, salir con, con ganas, ya que estuve en Gran Canaria y tuve que abandonar por, por problemas estomacales. Entonces tengo ganas, tenía ganas de volver a hacer una larga a ver qué tal responde el cuerpo. Vengo con muchas ganas, he estado preparando esta carrera con otras maratones que he hecho, bueno, estuve en el Campeonato de España, el Campeonato de Castilla-La Mancha, estuve en Borriol, he hecho varias carreritas para, para prepararme esta y a ver qué tal se da, con muchas ganas. Un nivel eh, creo que bastante fuerte, tanto en hombres como en mujeres, pero bueno, eh, hasta que no sabemos la salida no sabe lo que va a pasar, con muchas ganas y a darlo todo. At dusk, Dietrich Hermansen is leading the race. Behind him, Spaniard Yera Duran and Timothy Olsen from the US. The first shades of light unveil narrow rocky trails that lead runners to the highest point of the course. As the day goes by, the sun will turn an already dry environment into an even more challenging one. And we have a new leader. It's Timothy Olsen and his legendary long blonde hair floating in the wind. It's been a while since he's found himself leading such an international race. A little ways back, Chema Arenas shows strong race management with a very wide smile on her face. In the growing heat, aid stations become vital oasis for the participants to load up on fluids, calories, but also to lift up their spirits. Maria Pilaviracocha and Ildiko Vermesher are chasing the leader. After 12 hours and 23 minutes, Timothy Olsen celebrates with family his win on the 2017 edition. The race is a very tough, tough course. So next year for the championship, um, I'm, it might be enticed to come out for it. Um, we'll see kind of how my next schedule plays out. Um, but today was a, a great day and I enjoyed the distance. 115K um, is a good distance for me and I had, yeah, had a really good time out there. Yere Duran Lopez and Remy Kirtal complete the men's podium while Gemma Arenas finishes ahead of another Spaniard, Maria Pila. Estaba difícil porque la gente es muy buena e incluso yo con no hay una, una italiana y una francesa que no la, nunca había competido con ellas, no sabía cómo podían correr. Entonces en un principio el objetivo siempre es ganar, pero en una carrera pueden pasar mil cosas. Entonces, bueno, eh, lo tenía de, de, en mente y al final ha surgido ser primera, así que mira, feliz. On the same day, further south nearing the Moroccan shores, 
other ultra runners had gathered in Madeira Island to race the Madeira Ultra Trail. So go Lavaredo and then yeah, UTMB. But for me, it's what was my main objective, Madeira and the UTMB, like two races this year. Yeah. And Cappadocia, like late in the October. The Flowery Island has become one of the key trail running destinations and for a few years now, the tourism board has successfully invested in promoting the island as search. I'm looking forward like, to be Jim Wednesday and Paul and Killian on UTMB. For sure. This race will be key to confirm the training done over winter and fine tune what needs to be done before the key races of the season. But for now, pressure is low while athletes explore the area and relax a little. Anti-cancer fruit. Now I'm going to win, you know, the race for sure. Going beyond the simple race and discover local culture is also what suggests the Ultra Trail World Tour Circuit. Regardless of the destination, enjoyment and camaraderie are always on the menu. start getting serious in the night before the start. All participants, elite or meat packers need to attend the race briefing. All listen carefully to the last piece of advice and mistakes not to make on the course. For me, there will not be a course this soir, malheureusement. So, big deception. I have a pain in the foot, so an inflammation qui m'empêche de courir totalement donc c'est vrai que c'est frustrant c'est frustrant de voir d'être ici enfin c'est génial d'être ici parce que c'est une île qui est, qui est magnifique hein. et puis c'est une épreuve du World Tour donc il y, y a du gros niveau ça fait, ça, ça fait bizarre d'être là avec, tout, avec tous les autres coureurs et de ne pas pouvoir justement euh, bah, partager un bout de sentier avec eux et puis euh, d'aller euh, euh, envoyer du lourd euh, ce soir mais bon, ça fait partie d'une saison ou d'une carrière, il faut, faut gérer les hauts et les bas. En ce moment, pour moi, c'est des bas. J'espère que ça va bientôt être des hauts. Et puis, et puis voilà, quoi, ma foi, on est ici. Du coup, j'ai décidé de quand même suivre la course et puis d'aller voir, euh, voir un peu les, les amis sur le terrain et puis de, de faire le ravitaillement de, de André Hauser, qui est venu ici tout seul. Donc on va, aller, on va aller la soutenir et puis on va essayer de voir aussi un peu la tête de course. Donc on va faire un peu un, un petit mix et puis, euh, puis voilà, quoi. The Madeira Archipelago offers ideal playground for trail running. With miles of trails across shores and through rocky mountains, the island offers very versatile terrain. And with the Mediterranean climate for 365 days a year, weather is ideal and allows for different types of vegetation to develop, which makes the race even more exciting. The Madeira Island Ultra Trail unfolds over 115 kilometers and features a solid 7,300 meters of elevation gain. It crosses the island from side to side and passes through Pico Rovio, located at 1,862 meters, making it the island's highest point. We are last uh, just 12 hours before the start and it's just finalized to preparing the, the bags and everything. You will have the profile and you with the organizer and the, the, the last year of the race, you can know approximately which time you will put during each portion. I know that I will need at least one and a half liter of drinks as well. I know for this portion I will need that. 
in the beginning, as I don't, I won't eat a lot, as I, I will just take one bar. Et voilà, je sais pas si j'arrive à répondre un petit peu aux questions des gens, mais c'est qu'ils aiment bien de temps en temps savoir bah, comment vous faites pour mettre ça dans votre sac, de quelle façon vous faites. Et puis bien montrer qu'il faut voilà, s'adapter en fonction de chaque course, que voilà, le matériel ne va pas être le même à chaque fois. Mais qu'il y a certaines choses qui ne vont pas changer, comme par exemple bah, la quantité d'eau la quantité d'eau que je vais essayer de boire pendant la course, ça va toujours être à peu près la même. Selon la nuit, le jour, elle va varier un petit peu, s'il fait très chaud ou très froid, mais euh, on va essayer de vraiment rester sur des choses qui sont régulières. La prise de nourriture, pareil, toujours faire des, bah, des choses qu'on connaît. Bah, au niveau de la frontale, c'est pareil, vraiment de bien se positionner. En fait, ça va être des choses qu'on qu répète et puis petit à petit, ils vont devenir automatiques. Mais c'est vrai que bah, voilà, si on n'a pas l'expérience de ça, c'est vrai que c'est peut-être important de, bah, de le découvrir petit à petit. Et c'est pour ça bah, que j'essaie de le partager aussi. An unusual midnight show for a Friday night takes place in the streets of the island's capital city called Fjornshal. Headlamps, smells of ointments, pole adjustments and a few dance moves to get ready for the start. Time has come for the 800 participants to gather behind the starting line. Ça permet de, ouais, de lancer la saison, j'ai envie de faire une belle course, euh, d'avoir euh, du feeling euh, sur le parcours, euh, de me sentir bien tout du long pour donner un peu les bases euh, de, des gros objectifs euh, qui arrivent euh, en milieu de saison. Quoi. Ma stratégie, bon, ça va être ouais, d'essayer d'être euh, euh, le, le plus constant possible, de bien gérer ses allures, euh, refaire un point sur un ultra comme ça faisait longtemps que je n'avais pas fait. Mais euh, voilà, euh, j'aimerais euh, me rapprocher des temps de Zach Miller euh, de l'an passé, ça c'est sûr. The Jura native will face great competition this year with a very deep field of international athletes who all came here to test their current level of fitness. Also an opportunity to make a strong statement for the races to come. This is a very fast start for an ultra trail in the streets of Funchal. It could cost a lot during the latest stages of the race to push too hard too early. The mid-packers are well aware of this fact, and that's precisely why most participants will save their strength with a very conservative pace for the start. At the 5k points, crowds have started to build up. They are loudly cheering on the leading pack as well as all the participants to support them for their journey through the night. A long climb and first challenge of the day leads to Fanal. From sea level, it's an ascent up to 1,000 meters. This is the first of six major climbs over the 115 kilometer course. The pace slows down, strides shorten, and the upper bodies lean forward to better cope with the gradient. With Caroline Chavreau missing, Andrea Huser comes as the obvious contestant for the win. 
but as she leads the race early on, Italian runner Lisa Borzani remains a very serious runner-up. A dark night has set on the island. Runners are now relying on the narrow beams of their headlamps to find their way on the course. François Den and Pao Capel live in a rush at the first aid station there together. Italian runner Daniel Young, then Gindy Minas Grinius, Jordi Gamito, and Eric Clavery each come one after the other. Euh, je me sens plutôt pas mal parce que c'est vrai que l'année dernière j'ai eu quelques pépins physiques après le marathon des sables. J'ai eu une pubalgie qui a, qui, qui a duré un petit peu toute la saison jusqu'au euh, bah, jusqu début de l'année. Et là j'ai vraiment repris 2017 dans des bonnes conditions. Pour moi cette année le World Tour a particulièrement d'importance. Donc c'est vrai que j'ai axé mes courses principalement sur, sur le calendrier du World Tour. Donc, euh, donc voilà, ça avait ce, cet intérêt-là. Et puis l'intérêt final c'était aussi de me préparer pour, pour la Western State qui sera mon mon plus gros objectif cette année. So far, the top three runners are sticking with each other. Being in a group while running at night decreases the chances of going off course. The technical course indeed is very tricky and requires full attention. This race here, whatever I like. It's like one of three races this year, which I would like to do real great. So my objective is obviously to be, you know, in top one. <laughs> okay, usually saying in top five, but it's top one is very ambitious goal, but this is what I'm streaming here. Uh, and I'm aiming, you know, usually at the best time. And Zach Miller last year, he proved that this course could be run under uh, 14 hours. So my aim is the same, you know, just to run course under 14 hours. Speedy time and in Kumeada. Le premier point important de la course, après 45 km, donc le nuit là, il est 5h moins quart du matin. Donc on va voir comment ils arrivent, la première, la tête de course. Can you show us your checkpoint? Here, Gamito, Gediminas. Gamito, Gediminas. Look, look. The, the, the secrets of the champs, waiting for François Den. Yes. How is he feeling? Good, Are good. He, good? He is going to win for sure. Yeah. yeah for sure. François Den is sticking with the current leader of the 2017 Ultra Trail World Tour, Pao Capel, who seems very comfortable setting the pace. Yeah, he wants to eat. He wants to eat something. He wants to eat something at the moment. He wants to eat something. 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 En situation, en stratégie, on dit à François que bah, ouais, commence à partir vite, donc euh, il reste avec lui tranquille et donc euh, il va faire la différence après. On verra bien, la course de rails, on verra bien les deux, donc euh, ça va être serré. Comment vous sentez Comment vous sentez Que vous avez été arrivé au même moment Neuf minutes de la tête de course. Voilà les cinq premiers. Jamie Nazrinus, quatrième. Cinquième, Xavier Tevenard. Elle a l'air bien. Et Jordi Gamito qui arrive. Venga Jordi. Diego Pazzo spreads his commenting role for crew member for a minute. He has to take care of her fellow countrywoman, Andrea Huser, who's literally in and out of the aid station. Speedy time 2, à Coural das Feiras, kilomètre 60, 4500 mètres de dénivelé positif, la fin de la nuit pour les premiers. Donc là, ils vont arriver d'ici quelques minutes et on voit que tout le monde se prépare. Le, le clan François Den qui est prêt, qui attend. Ils sont là, souriants, confiants. 
bah, on en entend plus de plus en plus parler. Donc euh, je voulais découvrir ça par, un peu par moi-même. Et, euh, et puis bah, j'ai entendu pas mal d'échos sur la course de l'an passé, euh, voilà, qui, qui était plutôt agréable. Et, euh, et puis voilà, bah, je, voulais, je voulais vraiment attaquer sur un peu une nouvelle note. Donc voilà, c'est une course qui reste quand même très très longue, 115 km, même si les gens disent que c'est plus court par rapport à 160, non, je pense que ça reste quand même un, un très très gros bout. Et puis, euh, et puis voilà, je, voulais, je vais voir un petit peu ce que ça donne sur, sur ce début de saison, voir où j'en suis. Same logic for Xavier Tevenner, who seems to have very strong legs already, so early on in the season. Cinq bouchons, hein. cinq petits gels, c'est reparti, ça repart vite pour Xavier, et dans le coup... Just après. They just left. They are just here. Come on. Magnifique. Ça va vite là. Hein. Putain. Ça va vite. Hein. Oh, c'est chou. Allez, 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 c'est reparti avec Luis Fernandez. Andrea Huser carries on her solo run, leading the female race amongst the top men's runners. The sun is now shining high and unveils the epic landscapes the island has in store for the runners. After dark, new skills are required to run on the ridges, and this is where François Den decides to push the pace and drop Pau Capel. François Den en tête, qui a 8 minutes d'avance à Pico Ruivo sur euh, Pao Capel et 15 minutes d'avance sur Xavier Tevenard. Le voici. T'as 8 minutes hein, à Pico Ruivo sur euh, Pao et 15 sur Xavier. Control, François then waited for the halfway point and the steep climb to put the hammer down and drop his competition. On va à la rencontre du grand lituanien, du warrior lituanien, Jedi Minas Grinius, qui arrive en quatrième position là, pointé à peu près à 10 minutes de, de Xavier Tevenar. C'est très rapide, hein Oui, très très rapide, tu es. Je veux dire, maintenant c'est 9h30. Donc, imagine, Zach Miller l'année dernière était ici, 10 minutes plus tard que vous. Alors, le 5e et le 6e, Jordi Avito et Daniel Jung. Strong guys, strong guys. Il s'en va avec le sandwich, il prend le pique-nique pour la route, il reste encore la route donc. Pique-nique, pique-nique, pique-nique. Et voilà, on voit. Et c'est parti In the women's race, Andrea Huser is still leading very easily. Joue quoi, joue quoi, joue quoi C'est dur, ici. C'est dur, hein Ah, je peux me mettre la star. Ok, good look. Toi. Allez After the highest points, time to get back on lower grounds and flow on beautiful single track cruising alongside the ocean. The last section of the course offers a long traverse aside the mountain. 
On this slightly downhill profile, François then manages comfortably his lead over Pau Capel. Xavier Thévenard and Ginny Minas Grinius are both contemplating the third step of the podium. All the climbs of the race are over at the 90k point. 25 kilometers of downhill lead then the participants to the finish line. It is a different type of effort, not necessarily easier, especially such pounding on tired legs can become a challenge. Meanwhile, good downhill runners can make up a lot of time effortlessly. Time ambiance sur le mute. On va voir l'ambiance qui apparaît ici. At the back of the pack, another fight starts. The lack of sleep and sore legs are to be expected, especially when the body gives up. Then only the mind allows to keep moving forward. Target in sight, the finish line nearing the Macchio Beach, François then takes the win in 13 hours 05 and absolutely destroyed the previous course record by 47 minutes. Je m'attendais à je m'attendais à quelque chose de formidable et en fait ça l'a ça l'a vraiment été et euh, c'était vraiment intense du début à la fin un parcours euh, un parcours vraiment sans, sans trop de répit et euh, vrai magnifique on a plus je pense qu'on a eu beaucoup de chance au niveau des conditions météo et euh, non au niveau des coureurs l'organisation le parcours j'ai vraiment trouvé ça une super expérience with his second place Pau Capel secures his overall leadership in the 2017 Ultra Trail World Tour he finishes 23 minutes behind François Den. Then François, you know, uh, he has a lot of experience in, in trail running, in the trail, of course. So it was uh, an opportunity for for see what what he he does during the race, what uh, he can run in a big climb. So it was a, it was perfect for me. It was a good race, but also it was an experience. Xavier Tivna rounds up the podium taking third. A confidence boost for the rest of the season, for sure. Jiri Minas Grinius takes fourth ahead of Jordi Gamito and Daniel Young. With no real competition, Andrea Huser led the women's race from end to end and took the win in 16 hours and 30 minutes. It's it was harder than last year because the last uh, the not 20k I suffered a lot and up to uh, Pico Areira I hadn't any uh, strength strength in my leg. And off she goes to take a much deserved food bath in the ocean. UK runner Beth Pascal finishes second, 40 minutes of the lead. Tough, really tough. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I mean, the, the scenery is amazing. Like... Lisa Borzani rounds up the female podium of the 2017 edition. Satisfaction and feeling of accomplishment are emotions easy to read on faces of all the finishers of this 115km race. Hello tout le monde, hello le Ultra Trail World Tour. C'était vraiment fun de passer ces moments avec le Ultra Trail World Tour. J'espère que ce ne sera pas la dernière. Et en tout cas, si tu as apprécié ce que j'ai fait, tu sais où je suis. A month later, the Ultra Trail World Tour wears a very different coat. Endless eucalyptus trees, deep canyons and mineral cliffs. Welcome to the Blue Mountains in Australia. 
So Katie Morgan, um, I'm a tender coordinator for an engineering company and I live in Brisbane. I've always loved the outdoors, I've grown up doing a lot of camping, um, always loved nature and I think yeah just getting out there, being able to see part of the country that you might not see if you don't do an event like this, um, I guess it's a quick way to see it as well <laughs> when you're doing 100Ks at a time. Um, but yeah, just I think also the people, um, yeah, all the people I've met have always been so nice. Um, the camaraderie, um, the staff as well, it's always just a fantastic experience. This race shows a very different face of Australia. With the 100k and 4,400 meters gain, we're far from the white sandy beaches and its surfers. Two hours away from Sydney, the scene is much rougher. Dense vegetation, deep forest, and a mountain bursting out of the trees is a typical setup for the Australia Ultra Trail. Katumba is the point of reference of this Blue Mountains region. It will also be the main aid station of the race. Participants check the last details of their kit and pick up their race number. I signed up for the MDS about a year ago um, and obviously prepared for that, but I always knew that um, the UTA was sort of this time of year, um, but you had to sign up in October and I just thought, why not? Like, <laughs> hopefully I'll still have my fitness from the MDS. So yeah, it seemed like a great time to do it. Alongside enthusiast runners like Katie, several elite athletes also signed up. Some of them had the long journey over like Rob Crower and Matt Flaherty, who are coming from the United States. They both came to get a shot at the win. Since Hong Kong 100, there's been quite a lot of racing in the Hong Kong local season. So I've uh, been very busy up until maybe March, uh, and then had a bit of a break, and now I'm sort of building up again for, I guess, the European races, and uh, UTA being the, the, the first big race. And UTA especially has a, quite a uniquely long list of mandatory equipment, and they are relatively um, specific in what you need. So yeah, it's a little stressful, but uh, I'm happy to have passed. <laughs> Once mandatory checked out of the way, elite athletes introduce themselves to the press and other participants during the race briefing. They are happy to share their ambitions and plans but carefully leave out details to not give away their strategy to their competitors. Only one more riddle to untwist. The key to fortune's favor in a shadow on your wrist. Now is the calm before the storm. Shaking the stress away, getting in the zone, alone or together with other people, everyone's got their own way and habits. Here all the time, you've been on my mind. Come to the line, no holding back this time. You've been on my mind So come and tow the line No holding back this time A thousand people is about to run a 100k loop with 4,400 meters gain. They will have 28 hours to wrap up this relentless roller coaster with high points reaching up to 1,000 meters high. It is still pitch black for the start of the race, and then in Australia, it's the end of the fall season, which means the sun won't rise for another few hours. Drizzle invited itself to the party, but runners dressed accordingly. Good luck, everybody. After
After a countdown, runners are unleashed into the night. It shouldn't take long before they warm up in this humid weather, especially knowing the first climb is coming up soon. to improve on my Hong Kong finish or placing overall. Uh, that was a very challenging race for me coming from a proper winter in California uh, where we were buried in snow and I've actually in this build up been able to get on trails and prepare the way I, I had hoped to so I, I feel a lot more prepared, a lot more ready and excited to be able to put on a, a good performance out there. And my goal definitely will be to have life in my legs where I can hammer the final climb to the finish in, in a strong position. French runner Aurélien Collet is hoping to take the best out of such a hilly and somehow technical course. Je me sens plutôt pas mal. Je pense avoir fait une préparation plutôt régulière. Moi, euh, j'ai fait un 70 km cette année déjà pour un peu, un peu avec un, car, un parcours typique à celui-ci, avec des grands bouts de roulants, des bosses assez sèches pour valider un peu le, voilà, les jambes et l'état de forme. Et ça s'est bien passé, donc euh, j'espère. J'espère retrouver la même forme ici. Je m'étais fixé euh, 9h30. Euh, après, je ne me rends pas trop compte. Vu la météo et tout ça, je pense que ça va durcir la course. Euh, voilà, donc si, si je peux dépasser euh, en dessous, en, en tout cas en dessous les 10h, je serais content. After the morning fog, the skies are slowly clearing out over the Blue Mountains. In the lead, we find Tim Tollefson and Aurélien Collet both sustaining a very fast pace. Local runner David Bryan is in third. Matt Flaherty and Rob Carr are still in the game for a spot on the podium, and so is Mike Wardian. In the women's field, Australian runners clearly dominate on their home turf. Young Lucy Bartolomeo is in the lead at only 21 years of age. Looking great. Come a bit later, Robin Burns and Beth Cardley. The forest tracks of the Blue Mountains are rolling and not technical. Miles pass by without damaging too much the runners, hill after hill, everyone setting their own pace. 
Katie Morgan enjoys her journey taking memories along the way, forgetting about time that's running out. In the area of Elysian Rock, around kilometer 65, Tim Tollefson is the first to check in. He sustained a pace that was too high for Frenchman Aurélien Collet, who came in second and eight minutes back. Relying on his experience, Rob Crar is moving up the field and now in third position. It's very important for me to run my own race early on, maybe even to the halfway or three-quarter point. Um, for me, it's uh, composure, confidence, and compete. And I'll be thinking about that on Saturday. Um, certainly winning races and performing well uh, um, it, it is amazing, but you know, the, the first half of the race needs to sort itself out first before I start uh, uh, focusing on particular people and, and, and getting to that racing phase. You know, I'm going to run my race, my own race, early on um, and then reassess probably midway, see how I'm feeling, um, how I'm performing in the race and then, and then go from there. It's, uh, I'm not one to be leading a race early on and I certainly don't think I'll be leading um, UTA early on either. The sun is now high and shining over Australian tracks and runners geared up to protect themselves from the heat. The scene is set and the battle for the win will take place in the last kilometer section that includes the ultimate climb before the finish line. Tollefson from America wins on the nine hours, averaging 11.3 km per hour pace over the 100k course. I knew that I was fit and ready to compete, uh, and I tried to experiment a little bit with my race strategy by going out in the lead, um, or pretty close to the lead and taking over early on. It's not something I normally do. I just wanted to try out a new strategy and see maybe if I'll switch things up for UTMB this year. It's a double for North America with Rob Carr, who moved up to second place finisher. It was, uh, you know, the weather at first was uh, a negative, but it turned into be one of the most spectacular days possible. It was so much more uh, uh, challenging and beautiful than a bluebird day. And uh, it, it was long and tough, and uh, the, the steps were super challenging, but I can't be happier. It was, uh, it's been a long road back, and to, um, have a confident, strong race is I mean, maybe the most important race of my life, to be honest. Aurélien Collet stuck to his predictions and managed to complete the podium, taking third place in 9 hours and 30 minutes. Il a fallu gérer, tempérer. Et puis euh, Rob, quand il m'a repris, c'est pareil, il est, passé, euh, il est passé assez vite, il avait l'air un peu énervé. Après, bah, j'ai essayé de garder ma troisième place. Il paraît que j'ai failli la perdre au pied d'escalier, j'avais que 20 secondes. Euh, je l'ai jamais vu, l'Australien qui revenait. Et puis en fin de compte, dans les escaliers, il a craqué un peu et euh, j'ai pu conserver la place sur le podium. David Bryan lands in fourth place, only a minute behind Aurélien Collet. Then comes Justin Andrews, followed by a thousand runners who will be coming in all through the evening. In the women's field, Lucy Bartholomew took an amazing win in under 11 hours. It was a magical day and uh, everything I could have dreamed of. I think the best moment was probably coming into Katoomba Aquatic. Um, I got to see my brother and his girlfriend who were crewing for me and they had the happy birthday banner up and they popped uh, party poppers and balloons and it was really, at 57 kilometers, it was what I needed. Hanny Alston arrives in second place 20 minutes back. With nine women in the top 10, Australia showed its supremacy. 
for the rest of the pack, the journey will last many more hours, including a night spent in the Australian bush. It's a bit cold, but now that I'm walking, I'm really warm, so... Um, and yeah, it's a beautiful night tonight, no rain and heaps of stars. Um, so I think it'll be okay. <laughs> At dusk on the second day of racing, Katie Morgan finally makes it. Despite the visible fatigue, she manages to run across the finish line to become finisher of one of the wildest races of the Ultra Trail World Tour.